I'm Carol Feller and I'm a knitwear designer and a teacher and I'm based in the south of Ireland, Cork. I have been knitting for many years but it really was only when I picked up knitting as an adult about 10-15 years ago that I really started discovering the whole world of modern knitting. Very very different from what I would have learned when I was a child. And the most amazing thing about knitting is there's always something new to learn. There is always some new thing, some new technique, and something that makes it challenging and fun and exciting and interesting. Um, nice thing about knitting as well is it's just a great way of being able to express your own creativity. You can take just a pair of sticks and some yarn and with doing a series of knots, you can pretty much create anything that you can dream up in your imagination. Now, obviously it takes a little bit to get from those first few stages to the finished product, but in the videos that we're looking at here, you're going to get some of the basic stitches, how to do knit stitch, a purl stitch, how to cast on, how to bind off, taking a look at a few of the basic mistakes that you might make and how you correct them and how you can just do some simple finishing like weaving in the ends. Um, if you want a little bit more in specific techniques, you can also take a look at our website, stonestitches.com, onto the knit basics or the tutorial section where there will be step-by-step -step videos on how to work through all of those stitches with just that one particular technique shown. So this video is an overview with a very basic project that you can just work your way through to kind of get a feel for what it feels like going through your hands. Now the technique I am going to show you is called the flicking style where I'm going to hold the yarn in my right hand and I'm just going to move my, my right index finger to move the yarn. There are other methods where the English style where you actually lift your whole hand off and it's still the yarn in the right hand. Continental style which I won't be showing in this video where you hold your yarn in your left hand. I would suggest knitting a few small little projects to begin with in the style I'm showing here and seeing if you get comfortable with it and if after a few projects it's still not quite gelling then you can try out some other techniques and see if something else suits you better. So the, that's the whole thing about there being a lot of different ways of knitting is one style won't suit everyone and there will almost definitely be something that's going to suit you out there. So let's jump in and get started. We're getting started now and I'm setting up my tools to start off the knitting project. So what we're going to want is a ball of yarn. These come in different shapes. This is does look more like a ball. Sometimes they're longer like this. Other times you'll have to wind it up before you get started. But for this project and particularly when you're starting, if you find something that you don't need to wind, first of all, it's going to make it a little easier. Next thing is you're going to need some knitting needles. These come in different size tips and to, for your first project, take a look at the size that it says on your actual yarn and it will tell you what the size is on the needle. So that is the best place to start when it's all new to you. So that will change the size. The fatter the yarn, the, the fatter or the wider the circumference of the needle you'll need. This particular needle is called a circular needle. So you've got the two tips which you can work back and forth in rows or in a circle like this. Um, but I'm just going to use it for rows when we're working on it today. Um, you can also get straight needles where you'll just have this one, it's just a long stick with the knob on the end. Circular can be used for both, so it's often the most versatile type of needles I find. And then the other ones are just a nice sharp scissors that you can cut your yarn with. And a darning needle or a tapestry needle that has a blunt tip and a nice big opening on the back that you can use to weave in all of your ends when you're finished. To get started, we're going to do something called casting on, where we're going to put stitches onto the needle. You can put as many stitches as you want on, but the pattern or the project will tell you how many stitches you're going to need for that particular project. When you put them on, there's lots of different ways of doing it, and I'm going to show you the long tail method, the thumb method. So it's called the long tail because you want a long tail. So I'm going to probably put about maybe a, a foot 18 inches worth of a tail so that's this part here and then we're just going to start with a slip knot so I'll wrap it around my fingers and pull a knot through so that's the slip knot and we're just going to pop that onto your needle like so tighten it up then you're going to want your working yarn which is attached to my ball of yarn over here on the right 
and my waist yarn or the tail of the yarn over here on the left. So I'm just going to hold the yarn. I'm, you can see I'm twisting it, that's called tensioning. I will get back to that, but you can also just hold it like this. So you're going to use your thumb on your left hand, scoop the tail of the yarn from behind and grab onto it with your fist. Put the needle into that loop you've made and then take the yarn the front, with the actual main working yarn with your right hand, wrap it from right to left under the needle and then take the loop you've made with your thumb, lift it over. Then you can just see it's got a little bit of extra slack here, so you wanna go grab that tail and pull that tight. You don't want it too tight because it's gonna be very awkward to move, but you want it tight enough that you don't end up with a lot of extra yarn wrapped around. So let's, you'll keep doing that for as many times as you need. So I'll keep doing a few more here your thumb behind the waist yarn, scooping it up and grabbing that tail with your index finger. Put the tip of the needle in, grab your working, your, your working yarn or the main yarn to wrap it under and around the tip of the needle. Use your thumb to lift that loop over the needle. Let go of the loop, grab the tail and snug it up. So you can, this will speed up as you start getting very experienced with it. And there are other ways of casting on, but this is a very, very multifunctional way of casting on. So it's a great way to start. So I'll slow down for one more, scoop into the back, put my needle into the top, wrap this around and lift it over. So I'm going to continue on until I have 15 stitches here and then I'll show you how you tension your yarn and how you work a knit stitch. There are a couple of different ways that you can knit. Um, English style or flicking style is one where you hold your yarn in your right hand. Continental style or picking style is one where you hold your yarn in your left hand. I am going to show you how to hold the yarn in the right hand and I'll show you the flicking style that I use. Um, but if you don't find this comfortable, I would suggest taking a look at some of our continental style videos as well. So to get started, you're gonna to have to do something called tensioning your yarn. Tensioning the yarn is what's going to give you enough tension to be able to pick the yarn through or flick the yarn around and get a nice even stitches as you're working through. So the way I do it is I use my small finger, scoop it from behind and wrap it around. Then I put it under the next two fingers and over this finger. So that when I go to go knit the stitch, it will allow me to hold my yarn like this. Now, you may find it more comfortable to do a few extra ones on that. Then let me wrap it around a second time. If you find that it's not tensioning easily for you, um, you may also perhaps find it easier to just grip it like this when you're starting, to just lift it around, and that's fine too. Um, but I would suggest experimenting with a few different, like you could put them like this, I, like I do it like this, but if it goes like this and under is another method. So just experiment with ways that allow you to tension. And it's something that comes with practice. It will not feel very comfortable to start with. So just be aware that that is the thing that is going to be the slowest to, to get comfortable with basically. So now I'm going to go tension the way I like to tension. And I'm going to show you how to do the most basic stitch, which is called the knit stitch. So you're going to hold the needle with all of your stitches that you cast on in your left hand. I'll often use the top of my left finger to kind of feed it or to hold it and stop it slipping off. And then I'll go in to the tip of the first stitch from the left side to the right side. And with my flicking style, I'll end up, I'll leave it sit in the crook of the thumb here. You may find it easier to hold it as a pencil. That's again, that's a, a just totally personal taste and what's comfortable for you. So then what I do is I hold my index finger up a little bit like this so that when I wrap it around, what you're doing is you're wrapping from underneath around the tip of your right needle. Then you're pulling that loop you created through the existing stitch and then you're lifting it off the left needle and putting it onto the right needle. So I'll show you that again. You put the tip of the right needle 
into the next stitch on your needle. You wrap from underneath all the way around the tip of the right needle. Then you pull that yarn through that you just created and you lift the existing stitch from the left needle off. Now you can see why tensioning is so important. You see the way I can control how much yarn comes out here by how much I move that finger here. So as you get more comfortable, when you need more yarn, you find that you just kind of move that small finger out a little so that it allows this to move around. And what I also do is I would use my left needle to kind of move this back under so that I can slide it up and down on this part of my, my hand. So I slide it down, wrap this under, pull it through and pop it off. So you can, I'll just, I'll do a few quickly so I can show you how it picks up speed and then I'll slow it down again. So you put it through, wrap it around, pull it through. So you can see when it gets comfortable, it starts kind of flying through your hands like this. If you are new and you just want to get the motion, sometimes going in, taking the yarn, wrapping it around like this, pulling that stitch through and lifting it off works. If you want to learn my flicking style, sit it in the crook of your, tension your yarn first, sit it in the crook of the hand, hold the index finger up and then use your left hand for most motion like this. What you're doing with each one is the same. It's just a matter of how you actually move your hands is, that is what's different. When you reach the end of a row like this, if you've got straight needles, it'll be over here and you'll just turn that straight needle over to this side. With a circular needle, you just drop this part down and you turn it around. And you're always gonna want your, your working yarn or, your ta or your, the, the tail attached to that yarn at the front here. And you can see what when we've got knit stitches turned to the other side, you have these little bumps on the back here. And what we're going to start doing now is begin working this row again, just like this, the very same way. So when you knit every row like this, that is known as garter stitch, and it creates a lovely flat knitted fabric. Oh look, see if you've got a something like this, you can just knock that off. You, it produces a lovely flat knitting fabric that doesn't curl, but it does have bumps on both sides. So I'm gonna do a few rows in garter stitch and I'll show you what that looks like and how it lies. So now you can see when I've done a few rows that are knit back and forth, and I've created a little section of fabric in garter stitch. So you can see it lies completely flat. There's nothing curling, but it's got these very distinctive ridges on both sides and it looks the same on the front and on the back there's no difference at all so garter stitch is a really nice kind of fabric if you want something to lie flat and not to curl but it's not going to be a smooth fabric the way the next stitch pattern i'm going to be showing you stockinette stitch is so this is like our garter stitch that we've created here so it lies nice and flat and it's got those ridges this section here, you can see it's nice smooth stitch that we'd often think of when you think of uh, knitting and the back of it has all of the ridges. So you're basically taking all of the ridges you have here and putting them on the back of the work and just keeping a smooth surface. So that is known as stockinette stitch. And you may notice that one downside to stockinette stitch is that it doesn't lie flat. See the way the edges are curling in here? And we will come back to that. But first of all, I'm gonna show you how you create stockinette stitch. So the first part of it is the same. So you'll have what's known as a right and a wrong side of your work. So I'm going to assume that this is the wrong side, that this was a right side and this is going to be the wrong side. So the right side will be the smooth and the wrong side will be the bumpy. Smooth side, which we had worked here, would be a row of knit stitches. Same as we've done before with garter stitch. But then the wrong side, we're gonna introduce a new stitch called a purl stitch. So knit and purl are the two basic building blocks of knitting. Once you've got those, you can do pretty much everything. So to work a purl stitch, like before, we're going to tension your yarn in whatever way works for you. Settle your needle into your, into your right hand again. And this time, when you go to set it up, you're going to go put the tip of your right needle from the right into the left. So the other direction this time, into the first stitch on your left needle. Now we're going to go wrap the yarn over and under 
the tip of your needle. You can see as well, I see I actually use my left hand quite a bit to stabilize it here. So you can actually, I'm basically pinching those two together to just hold everything still so that I can just focus on wrapping that yarn around. Then I pull that loop I've created backwards again, using the tip of your left hand to kind of hold on to the, this needle here so it doesn't go anywhere. Pull that through. Once that's through, then you can use your left finger to kind of pop it off. And then you could even, if you're worried about it, you can snug it up a little. So that's the basics of the purl stitch. You go in from right to left, wrap the yarn over and under the tip of the right needle, pull that loop you've created through, and then pop the original stitch off. So right to left, wrap around the needle, pull the loop through and pop it off. So let's see that going a little bit faster here. So again, it's useful to see what this starts looking like as you pick up speed and then slow it way down, right to left, wrap it all around the needle over the top and under, pull that through, holding onto the top of this existing stitch until it's through and then pop it off. Right to left, wrap it around, pull it through and pop it off. I'll do a few rows here and I'll come back and show you what your nice smooth stockinette stitch looks like. So I've done a few rows of knit on the right side and purl on the wrong side. And you can see that I've now started creating some nice stockinette stitch fabric. You can also see how the edges of this start curling in a little here, but the bottom doesn't. And that's because of this garter stitch like we were talking about before, that if you've got garter stitch on the bottom, it's going to stop it rolling. There are other stitch patterns that you can use that would stop this, like ribbing and things like this, but garter is a very straightforward way of doing it. And if you want to make a flat piece of fabric where you're not putting any edging or you're not sewing it onto things, you might want to do the same thing here. So this particular little square here, you can see how there was a little bit of garter on the bottom, and then there was a few stitches that are garter on each side and that will stop the edges from curling under. So the way that's done is those stitches here are going to be knit on the right and the wrong side row and the ones in the middle will be knit on the right side and purled on the wrong side row. Down here it's knit, 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 right and wrong side row and the same on the edge. So that's how you get two totally different kinds of fabric and you stop it curling and all with those two basic stitches of just knit stitch and purl stitch. So when you start knitting, one of the things you can be sure of is that you're going to be making mistakes. So learning how to fix those mistakes or how to unpick your knitting is going to be invaluable. So if you've got something back a few stitches over here and you're like, oh, I made this a purl instead of a knit, or you forgot to actually wrap the stitch, or maybe you just added an extra loop in, which would add an extra stitch in, you're gonna to want to unpick a few stitches back to that point. And you can do that straight on the needles, just moving, basically unknitting or unpicking your work. The way you'll do that is hold your knitting with the actual yarn or the way you want to unpick in the right hand. And then you go into the base of that first stitch here. You always want to go in from the front to the back like this. And then you pull that needle off, uh, the yarn off. So that's all you need to do. Go into the base of that stitch from the front, drop the loop from the original yarn or the original stitch that was on and pull that out. So it's very straightforward to just to unpick a few stitches back to where you actually want to go to correct things. Now, if it's much further down, then you're going to have to do something more dramatic, which will be ripping. <laughs> so with that, this is a little scary because if you're a new knitter, this is kind of always what scares you. But sometimes doing something dramatic is good where you're going to take it all off the needles. And in that case, you can just rip all the way back like this. So I will give you a little tip in what I find helpful is I will usually rip back to one row before I want to correct. So say the mistake is down here, so I've got one more row to go, I'll stop there. And then I'll do kind of what I did on the needles on picking that last row to make sure that everything is picked up neatly without losing any stitches. So what I'll do there is I'll take this off and then take a look at this stitch. If you stand it straight, there's a right leg and there's a left leg. And the stitch to be mounted correctly on your needle 
wants to be twisted this way. So the right leg is in front and the left leg is behind. So you put it on like that. And then you can unpick the next one. And you can basically do the same thing. I'm just going to go into the stitch from the front, pull it out and look, take a look. You can see the right leg will always be sitting in the front. And I'm just going to go ripping back one stitch at a time. And that is the easiest way to rip back a few rows without having too many scary stitches doing crazy things on you. So one of the things to fix when you're learning how to knit is how you deal with strands that perhaps you didn't knit. So you have the stitch here on the needle, but there's this loop behind. So the first thing we're going to do is you will knit as far, or purl if you're on a purl row, as far as that stitch. There we go. And now you want to look at two things. You can see this strand here means that there's a loop that was meant to be knit that wasn't knit, and you've got this stitch in front. So I would suggest taking the stitch off, first of all, to double check that it's mounted correctly. So you want the right leg in front and the left, le left leg behind. So that's correct, so that it's not twisted. And then you want to take this strand and you want to basically knit it. So I'm going to lift this up and over, put that strand on that was meant to be knit. And then this stitch that's now correctly mounted, I'm going to lift over it. You can see that that looks perfect. So two things you want to check are, first of all, which way is that stitch mounted so that you're not creating a twist? And how is that meant to be worked? Is that meant to be on the needle? One other thing that you may end up discovering that you have on your needles, let me just lift this up here sometimes, as you're working along, you may have created these loops like this, but they don't actually belong to anything. So if I knit along and I realize, oh, I've got this loop that doesn't belong to anything, let me take this off and see what happens. So the best way of dealing with that is just to drop it down and to knit on. You will get a slightly looser stitch there, but you won't, don't knit into it because if you do that, you will accidentally end up creating an extra stitch. And instead of having your knitting going nice like this, it'll start spreading wider because you're introducing extra stitches. So those are often two of the most common mistakes when you're starting off, adding extra loops and knitting them so that you're adding stitches or having stitches that weren't knit properly that get dropped down. So hopefully those two techniques will help to kind of correct a few of the more common mistakes that you'll encounter as you're learning to knit. So as you're working along, obviously yarn is not infinite and you may end up coming to the end of your yarn. Now, you may also want to introduce a second color just to create stripes and you can do it the same way or you can do it a couple of different ways where you can keep two colors going up the side. So I'm going to cut this and pretend that I've reached the end of my yarn. So ideally what you want when you're doing back and forth in rows is you want to be able to change at the start of the row here because it's the easiest place to actually change the to be able to change into a new color or to a new ball of yarn. Um, if you reach halfway along and you realize that you're going to run out, I would suggest unpicking back to the start so that you're able to just start easily with the new one then. And all you're gonna to want to do for this is, let me find the tail of the new one, leave a nice long tail, maybe you know about this long or so, and hold it down here. And in fact, I'll often just hold the two together. You cannot one over the other if you want and come back and unknot it. Um, or you can just hold it like this and start knitting across the next one. So I'll hold the t old one and the new one and literally just start working across. And um, if that, really is difficult for you then you can absolutely just tie a knot around the new yarn across the old one up here but i would suggest unpicking that afterwards because you will be weaving these in in order to be able to hide them in the side of your work so you'll just start working along with your new yarn um, if you're doing something in the round which would be kind of a, a new more advanced technique again you'll be using seamless joins which my two favorite are either a Russian join or a spit splice, or uh, which would also be known as a felted join. But that would require um, to join in the middle of your work. But just to let you know that there are other ways of joining, but for working flat, you just literally start working with the new one, but try to keep it at the start of a, of a row, either the right side row or a wrong side row. When it comes to finishing our knitting, you're going to have to secure all of those stitches at the end. 
and that's known as binding off or casting off. And it is done in a very knitterly way. So you're going to want to either knit those stitches or purl those stitches while you're doing it. I'm going to show it knit wise, but if your pattern says to bind off in pattern, that just means that you either knit them or purl them depending on what the pattern is asking for. So you're going to start by knitting one stitch and then knitting a second stitch. So that's the start of it. So you just knit those two stitches. Now you're going to take the tip of your left needle and put it into the, the second stitch on your right needle and lift it over. And so that's binding off one stitch. So very, very easy. Then we're going to go knit one more stitch, knit that stitch. And then you're again going to go into the top of the second stitch on your right needle, lift it over the first one and you've bound off the next stitch. So that's all you're doing. You're just lifting one over another after you knit it. Lift it over. So you're only ever going to have one stitch on your right needle and you're gradually eating up all of the stitches on your left needle as you work. So let me stop here. You can see this is what it looks like. So I'm going to bind my way off to the end of these stitches and then I'll show you what we do with our last stitch coming up to the very end here and I'm just about to lift that final one over and now we've got one stitch left on the needle and to secure that we'll start first of all and we'll cut a tail don't make it too short because you want to be able to weave this in so having a little longer helps so snug that last stitch up then I'll just wrap the yarn around and pull that tail through the final stitch and I'll tighten this up a little so that I don't have too much of a lump at the end here and that is what your bind off or your cast off looks like. When you've finished your work you can see you've got what we'll call tails all the way around your work and so it's not going to be finished until those are all woven in obviously. So to weave them in it's going to be you're going to do it on the wrong side of your work for something flat like this or if it was seamed, then you'll have a seam running down the side and you can hide them in the seam. But the main thing is you want it one, to be as secure as possible and two, to be invisible from the front of the work. Outside that, it doesn't actually matter how you do it, but that is what you're trying to achieve. So everyone will have their own way of weaving at ends and I'll show you how I do it. So you want a tapestry needle that's got that nice big hole on the back and is blunt because you don't want to perforate the stitches. You just want to weave in around and we're going to it's nice and big so that you can even if you've got chunky yarn you can get that through and so you'll go back in the direction that you came from for the edge so in this case I will often pull this down and you see that'll actually help if you've got a little bit of a bump it'll kind of lower this down so all I'm actually going to do is basically along the edge I'll retrace the stitches in the other direction I'll just go up and down like this along the edge of the work. So I'll go for a couple of inches and then generally speaking, make sure that you stretch it out as well so that you're not puckering the edge. I'll usually go back in the direction that I came in for a few stitches so that it's really extra secure as you go. And then generally I'll just kind of go diagonally to try and bring it down and then when I cut, I'll leave a little bit of a tail because otherwise it is a tendency of popping out in the front of the work. And you can even, if you want to, split these a small bit here so that it's very unlikely to kind of pop through on the other side. So if you've got tails here where you join yarns in the side of your work and it's not at the cast on or the bind off, you're going to want to have to weave it in across the back of the knitting here. Make sure that you match up your color. So if you've got this dark color here, it's woven in across here and this light color will be woven in across here. And what I'm going to try and do is match the back of the, uh, ba the back of the stitches is usually the easiest way of doing it because it shouldn't be seen from the front. So I'm just going to begin by taking a look at these stitches here. See the way it curves up? and sorry, curves up here and then it goes down here and it goes up around there. So that's what I'm going to try and match. So I'm going to go under this one here first of all. Curve up around to the next one and bring it down over here. 
and when you're doing this you have to be very careful not to pull it too tightly because it is going to pucker then you curve up to the next one and I'll bring it back up over here curve over down here and in around here just keeping it nice and loose is very important and in up over here and into here so I'm going to do that for a few more stitches working my way across the work and if you don't match it up exactly it's fine just once it's not seen from the front is what's important so I'll do a few more in that way and then I will just do one or two back over here and then you'll break it in the same way as you did that so you can see that's not visible on the front of the work which is all you're trying to achieve when you weave those ends in I hope you enjoyed learning all of the basics of knitting in this here where we went through the knit stitch the purl stitch garter stitch stockinette stitch casting on binding off weaving in ends and a little bit on fixing stitches so if you wake your way through you know several rows of knitting and you can keep an even tension then you are doing so well but do be aware that it may take several projects before you reach that comfort level because while the actual act of knitting your brain initially is explaining to you what you're doing until your muscles remember which is just going to take practice it's not going to come a second nature so this is definitely a case where practice makes perfect and do remember that the tension that I think is the most important thing about knitting and it's also the part that is going to take the longest to get used to so be very patient with yourself practice in small little stages keep the project small that you're working on and very simple to start with so that you have a nice sense of completion of being able to start something finish it through put it to the side and then you can gradually start working your way into more complex projects if you want to take a look at some different stitches take a look at stonestitches.com where i will have tutorials and knit basics or some of the other videos here on youtube if you follow along and subscribe to the channel here you can also see anytime i put something new up or if there's a live and you want to ask me questions and things like that so i hope you enjoy this and keep watching and make sure you follow to get more videos in this learn to knit series